Hi, I'm Rob Vanston. Welcome to our tour of historic Rough Riders related sites in Regina with a side trip to Moose Jaw. So we invite you to join us as we tour around and take a look at some local landmarks in Rough Rider history. I'm standing on the site of the former Taylor Field, once known as Park Hughes, once known as Park de Young. In 1921, the Regina Rugby Club, as it was known at the time, played on this site for the first time. In 1924, the franchise was renamed the Regina Rough Riders. The Regina Rough Riders also played on this site in 1924. They moved around a bit. This became the Rough Riders' full-time home in 1936, when it was known as Park de Young. In 1947, the field was renamed Taylor Field in memory of Piffles Taylor. Welcome to Crescent Park in Moose Jaw. Yes, not all Regina Rugby Club history from the early years was made specifically in Regina. In fact, the first game in the history of the Regina Rugby Club, which became the Regina Rough Riders and later the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, was played October 1st, 1910 at the Moose Jaw Baseball Grounds. The Moose Jaw Tigers defeated the Regina Rugby Club 16 to six. And somewhere behind me was where that game was played on the Moose Jaw Baseball Grounds. It was tough to pinpoint precisely where until I contacted Stephanie Jeans of the Moose Jaw Public Library and she gave me some details. She shared, she shared with me a photo that shows a baseball game being played at the Moose Jaw Baseball Grounds and you can see in the outfield an old house that is now a funeral home in Moose Jaw and it helped us pinpoint approximately at least where the Moose Jaw Baseball Grounds were located. Obviously the landscape has changed over the years but this is as close as we can get to figuring out where it all started for the Regina Rugby Club and later the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Welcome back to Regina and the Old Dominion Park site. A week after the Regina Rugby Club played its first game, losing in Moose Jaw, they made their home debut near where we're standing in the Value Village parking lot and lost 7-6 to those same Moose Jaw Tigers, the difference being a missed convert. And there's some landmarks around here. There's four little plaques set up paying tribute to the sporting history that occurred on this site. There's a tribute to Piffles Taylor. So this is a neat place to go and visit and retrace the Regina Rugby Club's history, the Rough Riders' history, right back to the franchise's roots. And if you go in the mall, there's also a display there paying tribute to the history dating back to 1910. We're now at the corner of 11th Avenue and Rose Street. Behind me is the Holiday Inn and Suites, which for the longest time was known as the Drake Hotel. The Drake Hotel was managed for a period of time by Neil Joseph Piffles Taylor, after whom Taylor Field was named on September 6th, 1947. Piffles Taylor died in May of 1947 in a suite at the Drake Hotel. We're now on Montague Street, the house behind me, the White House behind me was the residence of Glenn Dobbs who quarterbacked the Riders from 51 to 53. In 1951, the Riders beat Edmonton 1918 to win the third and deciding game of the Western Final and afterwards the fans celebrated at Taylor Field. They ripped down the goalposts and fragments of the goalposts were carried throughout the city to City Hall, to Hotel Saskatchewan and then a group of fans had the idea, why don't we take some of the fragments of the goalposts to the Glen Dobbs house. So a few dozen fans, maybe even more than a hundred, made their way from downtown to here on Montague Street and they put the fragments of the goalposts on the front lawn. The fans waited for Glen Dobbs and his wife to return. They were elsewhere after the game for a little while and uh, the Dobbs' two young children, Johnny and Glenn Jr., were at home with a babysitter and the fans were chanting so the two Dobbs children came out and, and met with the fans. Eventually Glenn and his wife showed up, greeted the fans, thanked them. There were some signs erected on the front lawn saying hi Dobber and thanks Dobber and once Glenn Dobbs met with the fans as he always did so cordially, the crowd dispersed and the Dobbses went to dinner and people continued celebrating the 1951 West title the following weekend in Toronto the Riders lost to Ottawa 21-14 in the Grey Cup but it didn't really affect the popularity of Glenn Dobbs to this day is he's a legend and he lived right behind us. I'm here with Jim Hobson, former president and CEO of the Rough Riders. Jim played for the Riders from 1973 to 1976, and when he did, the Rough Riders practiced on the exhibition grounds, and the entrance to the practice field was roughly 
around where the Tim Hortons Affinity Plex entrance is. Are we close, Jim? We're close. I think we were further north, you know, more on the on the uh, entry on the other side. But we're in the area, and I know we were close. They started building the brand here in about 76, so we, that was going on behind us. But, yeah, I have great memories of, of the old place. But what was really... Uh, uh, outstanding, I guess, to think about was the fact we practiced in the middle of a racetrack. And it was a good field. There was nothing wrong with the field, but what was interesting was uh, the horses were often out running and the sulkies and so on. And I remember uh, Coach John Payne always saying to the new players that came up during the season, okay guys, when we go out, watch for the horses. And they'd look at each other and say, watch for the horses, because they had no idea what we were going to and out you'd go. But it was it was interesting and uh, um, it, was, it was home for a long time. Did some poor soul ever get hit by a horse, or were there close calls? Uh, there were close calls. There were definitely close calls because the guys would kind of want to, you know, want to test how, how quick they could be. Uh, but I don't me remember anybody getting hurt. But you know, we'd stand around and watch them when we were waiting to get going, and uh, it was kind of kind of interesting, kind of fun. What would have been more impactful, getting hit by a horse or getting hit by Jim Hobson, that fierce offensive lineman? Uh, the horse would definitely be more impactful. I would say though that uh, Ed McCorders might give the horse a run for his money. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's great. Behind me is the Hill Avenue Shopping Centre. For the longest time, the Rough Riders' offices were located on the second floor at 3418. Ken Preston, the general manager, negotiated many a contract, generally on his terms, in that second floor office. And also many of the players used to go to the Houston Pizza that's part of the Hill Avenue Shopping Centre. Ron Lancaster and friends would sit down at a booth and oftentimes diagram plays or possible plays on a napkin. And some of those plays would then be implemented at practice later in the day and ultimately in games. So a lot happened at the Hill Avenue Shopping Centre. We're now on Emerald Park Road. I'm here with Lana Mueller, the former Lana Lancaster, and she grew up in the house behind us. When you look at the Emerald Park Lancaster homestead, what kind of memories does that evoke, Lana? Oh, lots. I mean, I guess the major memories are of the fact that we just grew up in this great area. Whitmore Park was lovely. There was lots of um, other rider families that lived here, so it was easy to get together. Like I told you, I remember dad every spring getting in shape by running to the Plains Hospital and back and then complaining about the food my mother had bought all winter, but yeah. I mean, even on the infield of this park, yes. this is where in the spring every year, number 23 yep. would warm up his arm for training yep. camp. Every so often he would, yeah, he would, some neighbor, he'd be out here throwing with the boys and they'd come over and he'd say, hey, you know, I'd like to play catch with you too. And Ron Wood was one of them and he would come over and dad would, you know, tell him to go a little bit further and he'd go a little bit further and then he'd throw it back and then he'd say go a little further and he'd go a little further and that's how dad warmed up, got ready for the, the summer, the spring. And What I remember growing up is if you looked at the Regina phone directory and you looked up Ron Lancaster, number was in the book so was Emerald Park Road a lot of people it wasn't hard to figure out where the Lancasters no, lived. no it wasn't um, it's funny because lots of people would come to our door and ask to speak to him like you know to talk to him or whatever and remember the one lady she um, had made a green and white Afghan and she brings it to the door and dad was home and she hands me this box and she goes hi uh, this is for Ron Lancaster I go wait a minute he's here just give me one second and I went to go get him and by the time I came back she was gone no car no nothing just gone and so I said well dad this is for you and he it was beautiful it was a beautiful I'm sure my mother still has it well thanks so much Lana uh, welcome home oh thank you well you can't do a rider related tour of Regina without including the obvious, the new Mosaic Stadium. Jim, when you look at this shrine, what do you think? I'm still in awe when I come and uh, walk around inside, outside. It's, it's, it's awe-inspiring. It's a tremendous facility. Uh, it brings back memories of the old days, though. We used to roll down this street in front of us on a bus and heading over to the old Taylor Field. And, uh, you know, times have really changed, but it's, it's, a, it's a great facility. We're lucky to have it. Did you ever think you would see this day when you're standing outside something like this? No, I did. I, I never believed that. Uh, when I first started with the riders, I hoped we could improve the stadium we had. And uh, it took a few years, but uh, everything came together, and now we've got uh, something we can be proud of. But I'd be lying if I said I saw this, you know, 10, 15 years ago. It took a, took a while to come together, and the time was right, and we got it done. 
So thank you for joining us during this tour of Rough Riders Landmarks. Now if you'll excuse me, just for old time's sake, I'm going to sit back and watch some football at Taylor Field. Lancaster <sighs> sets behind that efficient wing line. Hand off Reed. No stopping him. Touchdown!